What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. All right, we are hot. We are hot. Check, check. Can we get a hot mic check? Fire. Ahoy. Episode 52, Harsh Language yeah. Podcast. Yep. Happy Superman Day, guys. That's the thing? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, oh, shit. I, you know I'm representing. Superman Day, huh? Wearing this fucking shirt with these fucking stretchy-ass fucking arms. You see, this is why I wear Hanes, Marvin. You don't get none of this with Hanes. <laughs> you see this shit? Yeah. Look at this shit. Look at that. I don't I don't know if my I wore my so Superman bad. t-shirt the last one or the one before, so I didn't want to wear it again. I represent my boy, even though it's mirrored. But you get National the idea. Superman Day, huh? That's right. I don't know honestly why June twelfth is Superman Day, but I think it might have had something to do with marketing back when uh, Man of Steel came out. Oh, that's lame. So it's not even like an old holiday. Well, but also Action Comics one came out in June of hmm. nineteen thirty eight or whatever the fuck year it came out. So I don't know. I guess the like June has something to do. So they just picked June twelfth. I don't know. That's cool. But nevertheless, big day, Marvin. Big day. How you guys doing? Twitter must be going crazy. Oh, yeah. How was you know what else is going crazy? Reddit. Oh, tell me. Oh, no, yeah. What's Reddit's going on with Reddit? dying. Oh, yeah. You've been upset mm. about that. It's bad. It's fucking up everything. All the all the apps are shutting down. Mm-hmm. I don't use Reddit, Marvin. This is why. All the fucking, all the subreddits are like blacked out right now. <laughs> Today is June 12th. We are recording on. If hey, you didn't know, people I, that are listening. I tried to show you the light. Get that. Them API dollars. So stupid. I had a They're going to kill their own website, bro. Nah, people won't stop using Reddit. Uh, Hey, man. You don't understand how many people use third-party apps because of how terrible the official Reddit app is. Listen, I had a similar issue happen to me years ago with Twitter. I was (laughs) using this app called Tweetbot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the app icon was atrocious. Okay? And... You know, me as a man of meticulous detail, I yep. couldn't have that. So finally I caved and I was like, I'm just going to use the regular Reddit, uh, Twitter app, specifically just because of the app icon being cleaner. It's just, you know, blue with the bird. So <laughs> well, that I has mean, nothing to do with what I was wait, talking you about. You can't make your own <laughs> app icon on no. the Apple phone? No, only if you're jailbroken. True. Who calls it the Apple phone? What are you, my fucking the grandmother? Apple phone. Tim Apple. Apple. Tim Apple. Tim Apple of the Apple phone. Bro, you want to hear something hilarious? Speaking of boomers, my fucking dad calls me today. He's like, did you buy something on Amazon with for 15 bucks with my card? I'm like, no. I'm like, why would I do that? He's like, oh, I got a charge from Amazon for 15 bucks. I'm like, for what? He's like, I don't know. I was like, did you buy anything on Amazon? He's like, no. I'm like, do you have an Amazon account? He's like, no. I'm like, so you, I'm like, you've never bought anything on Amazon. He's like, no. I'm like, well, you got to figure out what the purchase was for. I was like, but it wasn't me. So he calls me back. He's like, yeah, I called Amazon customer service. They said it was for Bitcoin, so it must have been you. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? You, <laughs> I'm like, you can't Bitcoin buy Bitcoin through Amazon for $15? I'm like, I'm like, Dad, you definitely spoke to what? like some fucking dude in like fucking Bangladesh, like scamming oh, yeah. your ass. He's like, no, I Googled Amazon customer <laughs> service, and that's who I spoke to. I'm like, they looked up your account with what information? He's like, I gave them my name. I'm like, they're not going to just look up your account without any credentials. I'm like, you're like, what are you talking about? Just I'm, the name is good. Yep. I'm like, go to the fucking bank and change your debit card. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, that's immediately. Crazy. These fucking boomers, bro. They don't even know how to do shit. Nope. It's crazy. He'll, every yeah, fucking like two days. on Amazon. It's like yeah. The old email of the Nigerian prince with money locked up. He just needs yeah. a little bit to e- free it up. Every two days, it's something else with this guy. He's like, Danny, he's like, nothing's fucking. He's like, I did this thing. He's like, I don't know what's going on. And it's like, this fucking apps are all rearranged and shit's all over them. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck did you do? He's like, I didn't do anything. I didn't touch it. I'm like, okay, well, this doesn't just happen by itself. So, yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, Marvin, our it's stories the are. This excuse in the book. Yeah. I didn't do anything. It just yeah. did it. It just did it. Yep. Our stories are very similar, Marvin, and I don't appreciate you trying to make it like mine is crazier than yours. Okay. I yours had to. Yours is very crazy. Nope. At the time, the Twitter app was terrible. The native app, the UI was dog shit. And then mm-hmm. I had to wait. I didn't really use Twitter that much back then. And I had to wait until they sort of redid it. Now it's fine. It's perfectly tolerable. I like it. I don't yeah. mind the Twitter app, actually. It's clean. I like it. It's not bad. 
Yeah. Mm. So I can make my Twitter application icon like the Superman logo. Mm -hmm. You have to jailbreak your phone in order to do that. Yeah, I made a whole theme for my iPhone. Marvin remembers. Remember yep, when I was jailbroken? I, that. I made a whole theme. I was going to sell it and everything. But the... Uh, the texted blue. The repo <laughs> that I was, sell was selling it on got shut down or bought out by another one. And then like, I wasn't meeting. I don't know. Whatever happened. But I'm not selling it anymore. Some yeah. apps, some apps, you can change them natively in the phone, like in the yep. app settings. But that's on the app developer to just put in those options. Right. And they're usually not that much better. So, right. I think Instagram true. lets you do it. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. What'd you guys get up to this week? Anything good? Um, this weekend? Nah, not much. Not much at all. I, uh, continuing my streak of, of marathoning fucking things that I've been meaning to watch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I told you guys last week about all the shit that I finished this week. I finally. Fucking thugged it out. I finished Yellow Jackets. Oh, wow. Nice. You know, that's Dusty, I thought we made it further than we did because we started it together. But we only made it to episode three before we kind of like called it quits. There with a towel. Apparently it's pretty laggy until then or thereafter, right? Well, after episode four or five, it picks up. Yeah, it actually, the season did pick up. I am happy to report that it did get much better the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm going to tell you what, from now on, unless it's something that I'm like really fucking dying to watch, I'm just going to let it fucking build up and watch it all at once because this week to week bullshit, it's over. Like it's done. Yeah. And yep. you, and That's what I'm waiting for Silo. And I have a point that I'm getting to with this too. But I, uh, is there a fucking bug on me? Probably. I watched. Hopefully it's a spider. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> good friend. Radioactive spider. Now that I'd go for. That'd be sick. Um, but then you gotta change your last name to like Dan Davidson. <laughs> Don't yep. say my real last name, Marvin. Don't be doxing me. No, 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 no dox. No, no, no. Dan Davidson, DD. Yeah, DD, because they all they all have the double letters. That's true. Oh, Peter Parker. Yeah, that's Miles true. Morales. Miles yep. Morales. That's a good point. So, well, not the other guys, but we don't know those yeah, guys. It's fine. Speak <laughs> Clark Kent. Well, no, that's a K. <laughs> but it sounds it sounds the same same k k sound you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Lex Luthor. Speaking of Miles <laughs> Morales, we'll get to him in a minute. Lex Luthor's a good one, yeah. Um, mm, I forgot about that one. Daredevil. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> no, listen. Wolverine. Yeah, there you go. Right there. Now we're just, now we're just saying things. <laughs> the now proof is the proof saying. is in the pudding. <laughs> so I uh, watching Yellow Jackets gets better, right? Yeah. Um, it was looking bad for it from what you were saying. Yeah. Can't be watching stuff week to week anymore, and I'll tell you why in a second. But You don't have to tell me why. No. I know exactly why. Well, there's that Let's reason, that. but there's a whole other reason that you don't even know what I'm about to say. Oh, shit. Yeah, Go it's, on. it's some crazy shit. But anyway, Yellow Jackets gets better. I'm not, like, super thrilled with the season because it does leave a lot of questions, it raises a lot more questions than it answers stuff. Yeah, but it was it, it was a satisfying season overall, and there's another season coming, so that was fine. Whatever. I still kind of like that show. Um, so yeah, I suggest Ooh. you uh, finish it, Dusty. Okay. Get around I'll to probably, it. I'll probably I'll probably do Succession before I do finish Yellow Jackets. That's fair. Mm. So once I finished that, I was like, well, what am I going to watch next? I wasn't quite ready to jump back into Mandalorian, even though I only got three episodes left that I haven't. I didn't realize there was only eight this season. I'll get around to that. Couldn't do it. Then I remember that show Marvin recommended to us, The Undoing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Undoing. The yep. six-episode miniseries with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. Now, What do you think of her stone face? How do you feel about that? I think she's gorgeous. She's one of those <laughs> no actresses way. that just gets more attractive as she ages. But, no, she had to be. No, you don't. No, no, no. She's not like that always. That's That, she, that was like her character. You think so? Yeah, bro. Didn't you? Dust, are you ever going to watch this? Can I got to throw out some spoilers? You're never going to. You're never going to watch it. It's a fucking... What, what are you smiling? You, if you don't want me to spoil it, I won't. Go ahead. She's a stoic character, Marvin. That's the whole point of the show. Oh, let's talk about it. All right, so this is a murder mystery, right? And I spoke yep. to Marvin about this. You know, Dusty. Anybody who knows me knows I have a penchant for solving crimes and mysteries in movies and shows. In fact, yep. the movie The Village, when that came out, M. Night Shyamalan's movie... Uh, you guys have both seen that, right? 
The village? Probably not. Yeah, it's a movie about this like Puritan fucking like 1800s village. Mm, no, I haven't seen it. But like the M. Night Shyamalan plot twist is that it's actually like modern day and it's just this like little band of like idiots who decided to go in the woods and like pretend they were living in Puritan times because uh, they didn't want to be like, you know, influenced by the outside world or whatever. Yeah. Literally at the sitting in the theater with my friends, I was like 15, 16 when this came out. We're sitting there and I'm like, the opening credits roll. And I ran, we knew what the movie was about because of the trailers. And I was like, yo, I bet you this takes place in modern day. And my friend was like, you fucking looked up spoilers. I was like, bro, I wouldn't do that. That's like, I wouldn't spoil it. <laughs> sure enough, I was fucking right. So I just, have, I, I'm skilled at this sort of thing. You know what I'm saying, Marvin? This is true. Yes. And to be fair, you know, any, any show or movie that has like any good writing will leave little breadcrumbs here and there to like, Hint the yeah. audience what's going on. I I just happen to be decent at like picking up on that stuff. So I said to Marvin when I was like, I was like, what am I gonna watch tonight? Now? I finished Yellow Jackets. I was like, oh, I'll watch The Undoing. I was like, let's see how fast I could solve it. Marvin challenged me. I fucking broke a record. Twenty <laughs> minutes into that first episode, in real time, I texted Marvin. I'm like, oh, this bitch just left. She's gonna get murdered by this fucking dude. <laughs> I called it, Marvin. I fucking called it. Are you impressed? You're yeah. impressed a little bit. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I made you did sure. doubt yourself, though. I doubted myself. You can't leave that out. I'm not. No, I doubted myself for one episode, and it was actually becomes my entire problem with the show. It was one of those. It was a very good show. I enjoyed it. I won't really get into the nitty gritty of it, but it's one of those yeah. like shows that they like purposely like um, lead you to think it's the red herrings. They throw red herrings yeah. out there a lot. It's a lot of them in every yeah. episode. It's like, yep, ooh, it could be this person. But, like, the whole time, it's really, like, a pretty... It's not that type of story where, like, there's twists and turns and things. It always comes back to the fact that it's, like, nah, it's just really just the person clearly, that you know it is. Like, yeah. It, yeah, it's, like, there's just... Too many coincidences. Too many weird coincidences happening. It's And it's usually, as in real life, the simplest explanation is the correct one, right? Yep. So, yeah. Um, I impressed myself with that quick solve. But, yeah, Marvin, <laughs> that's her character. She was, like, stoic and, like didn't really show her emotion that's why oh, okay. that's why like by the end of this of the show it's like a big turning point for her that she go like does what she does because she like did it through a yeah. third party like she asked for help and like her father always makes point like oh you never asked for help like I right so like that's why she was like stone-faced and also because of the trial like that the the fucking yeah lawyer was like don't make any emo and that's true because you, because in a court case, like the like the jury and like the media will judge you based off of anything. You cry, you're fucking, you know, you're guilty. If you not, if you don't cry, you're too, you're not sympathetic. It's like it's so stupid. So, but also she's like figuring this shit out in her head. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I thought she was maybe it was just the uh, the Botox or something. You know what I'm saying? Could be that too, but I didn't. I thought it was mostly her character. I thought, well, either way, it made sense for her character, so maybe they just casted her well. I don't know. <laughs> I thought the acting was really good. Hugh Grant was fucking great. Uh, Hugh Grant was great. Uh, he was real good. Who else? Um, it's Nicole Kidman, good. Hugh Grant, yeah. and uh, what's her name? What's his name? Um, um, God. Who's the guy from 24, Dusty? Jack Bauer? Yeah. Uh, is that Kiefer uh, Sutherland. Um, so Donald yes. Sutherland is in this, his father. That dude says hmm. some words weird. He does. Yeah. Uh, it did not sound like he was from New York. I didn't know where the fuck he was from. Nah. The cops were a little cartoonish. Oh, yeah. Um, and the only thing I didn't like about the show, I actually changed my mind by the last episode, because, like, the whole time I was, like, a little bit annoyed that they're, like, leading you pretty heavily to believe that it was actually her who did right. it in some, like, fucking... They were pushing that hard, yeah. ...fit of jealousy. And then they almost made you think it was a kid for a little bit, for like yeah, a but, half of an episode. But mostly her. And then I was annoyed throughout the whole series. I was like, why are they pushing this so much? It's like, not, it's clearly not her. And But then yeah. by the end, I realized like what they were actually doing. I don't think they were really leading you to believe it was her. She's the main character and you're witnessing all these events happening from her perspective. So like, right. they kind of put you in her head and how she's sort of unraveling everything. In yep. her head, and it, and so I, at, by the end, I was like, "All right, that's it's, I forgive it." But I enjoyed it; it was good. But I that, enjoyed it too. But one thing, and the one thing I wanted to tell you with week to week stuff, right? Yeah, it is very noticeable 
that this show was written to be week to week, right? Oh, yeah. And it's a very noticeable thing when you watch a show that is just released all at once, like, let's say, Stranger Things. They're not, the episodes aren't really serialized like week to week shows are. Right. Where they end on like a cliffhanger for next week. Most shows that come out all at once, it's just like each episode just continues where the next one left, where the last one left off. But this felt yeah. very serialized to me. And then I looked it up and it actually turns out this is one of the only, I think it's the only HBO show ever, maybe other than Game of Thrones, I forget exactly, that had a week-to-week -week consistent increase in viewership. Ah. Uh, so, okay. well, that tells you something. <laughs> but yeah, so I watched that and a smattering of movies throughout the week, but that was about it. But I did doing work. Doing work, boys. I don't know what I'm going to watch next. Yeah. I, uh, I don't I, know what to watch either. I got on a little bit of a Stephen King kick this week because, I, you know, I made you go read fucking Dark Tower. Would you finish it today? <laughs> um no i think i'm like 65 percent through damn you put in work yeah you it's, like um it's, yeah, it's good do. but it's very it gets it's weird it gets hard to follow sometimes Ooh. he just starts talking about the weirdest shit it gets even crazier marvin and he's like doing flashbacks and you don't even fucking know it's like no warning it's just flashback just starts yep yeah but it's good I, like, I always liked his style of writing so uh, i mean he's a genius yeah i mean I, I definitely I, told you I get like Witcher vibes from this, like big Witcher vibes. Yeah, you'll get I think a it's lot. Just like a, that's not 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 necessarily Witcher, but I don't know what that type of story progression is called or whatever. But I get that type of. You haven't read the Witcher yet, right? Uh, I read some of the first Witcher. Mm. It was the, good. The original one, the short stories, right? Yeah, the short stories. Yeah. Um. Dusty, you haven't read any Stephen King, have you? You're not a reader. Are uh, you a reader? Uh, I'm not an avid reader. I've had to read way too many tech books, so I don't <laughs> really like. I'll mm. read some graphic novels from time to time. Yeah, same. Um, short mm. graphic novels, comic books, long comic books, or graphic novels. I love those. Um, mm -hmm. Nice. I tried to get into some graphic novels, but I couldn't. Some. Really? I was trying to read uh, The Watchmen. I was like, this is not. Uh, Dune, Too much text. Dune is a hard weird. read, but the graphic like novel is real easy. You're off the podcast, Marvin. <laughs> that you yeah. didn't like Watchmen. Hey, I love the movie Watchmen, but reading the graphic novel, oh, I'd careful. rather just read a book. Oh, man. Think. We're going to have a fucking army of Zack it's, Snyder fans on know. our it's channel now. Much. It's too much. Uh, it's like, but my mom was a big Stephen King fan, and she had all the books, so I've I've gone through some of them. Yeah. You don't know, see what I'm saying, though? Like, you're reading all this text and also trying to digest all these all this imagery at the same time it's like just let me i just rather just read a book yeah but that's what's cool about comic books is that you they're presented in a way like they're well that's de i mean comic books are easier to read than fucking the watchman where it's like fucking walls i mean of it depends upon the book though like, like, Dune, like what there's a lot of internal dialogue and external dialogue yeah, that's why the right. first movie really struggled and you can kind of convey that easier i think in a graphic novel because of the you know the talk the, the talk bubbles it's just really yeah easy to... <laughs> I, I get... had an easier time reading <clears throat> um Sandman <clears throat> <clears throat> forgot you read that I get what I you're saying I finished it but I read a lot of it yeah I get what you're saying about Watchmen it's just that and any graphic novel too is, but the thing is is like you read them at a different pace than you would read a book so you kind of just like you're not really just re go like reading through flipping the page read like you're taking in the imagery and you read the yeah. bubble and you go on like you gotta read it at a different pace to kind of really like absorb it yeah whereas yeah. you strike me as a speed reader marvin like somebody is just like oh yeah fucking flip it yeah I you read can't it pretty fast yeah you can't really do that with like comics and shit you know when i was in high school we had to do or, or junior high when i got into junior high i was in all the uh smart kid classes because i'm somewhat of a genius you guys may not know that um <laughs> And they made it, I had to take like a forced speed reading class because they're like, this is required for you to like do all this work you're going to be getting. And then I just was like, eh, so fucking lazy. Can't <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I Bro, hate reading. I was just say I hate reading. Yeah. I don't see how you hate reading. I just, just lost my interest for it. I don't know. Too much TikTok. No, it's not yeah. TikTok. It's like everything. It's like I well, first of all, <laughs> I would kidding. I would rather watch something like straight up. I prefer the medium of of motion pictures. 
whether it be really? TV or movies. Yeah, I it depends mm-hmm. for me. I feel like if there is a book version, I would probably prefer the book version of mm-hmm. most things because yeah, I am a still- speed reader too, so I could. Well, read, I'll play The like, Last of Us 10 more times. I'll probably not watch the, the show 10 times. Well, I mean, video games is different. <laughs> I'm not counting video games in this. But that's a form of art. It is. No, it totally is. And it's a great one. We've talked about this before. It's just that most movies and books don't get adapted into video games. So, like, there's usually a big crossover between books and movies, right? Like, Yeah, hmm. there's a bigger crossover. Yeah. Yes. So It's like, it's the same thing with, like, you guys don't, I don't know if you guys watch anime. I know Dan doesn't. Dusty, I don't know if you watch any anime, but... I have seen some. I don't watch it regularly, though. With anime, I could read the the manga so much faster yeah. than I could watch, like, episode to episode. Yes. And then I could just go and, like, watch, like, the fights. <laughs> and, and it's, like, a lot. You get uh, through the content a lot faster. You don't have to sit you're through. You're a fucking cut thirty minute skipper, fucking too, aren't episodes. you? No, video I, games. I mean... Yeah, you are. Not if it's a good game. Admit it, bro. You're a cutscene skipper. Not if it's a good game. One of my friends, she fucking tells me all the time. It drives me crazy. I don't know how she does it, but like, she'll she'll tell me about it. like, oh yeah, I was watching this thing, but I skipped like twenty minutes in the middle because I didn't really care. I'm like, how the fuck are you skipping shit during? But like, how do you do that? I don't understand. I am a text skipper as far as like, uh, I don't read all the text and like Fallout. Like Fallout style RPG uh, games. Uh, yeah, I try to in a lot of games like that. Like it's Witcher. Just too much. In The Witcher, I fucking read everything, but like. I didn't. Ain't it, no way. It was like fucking Bible <laughs> texts and shit. I'll, I'll do it. If, that shit. I'll do it if I'm really into it. But yeah, no, I get you with that. But anyway, what I was going to say is the reason I prefer movies and television, right? I think it's something to do with me as well because, you know, I, um, I'm a graphic designer, right? So, but like I, I used to be. I used to draw and paint and stuff. Be I was an artist, right? Yeah. And I liked to write when I was a kid. But like when you read a book, you're I mean, in most cases, like, yeah, okay, a really good writer, like let's say Stephen King, they're obviously one of their strengths is like imagery and like really putting you in the scene. But either way, either, even still, there's like no possible way that you could envision exactly what the writer was envisioning when they were writing it, right? Like mm-hmm. even no. even though Stephen King—that's the beauty of it, though. It is no that that that's definitely a beauty of it. Like even though Stephen King like describes what Pennywise looks like in it, <laughs> he uses like real life clowns as like reference points. He's like it's like a right. blend of that. There's no way that like a reader in 1980, whatever the fuck, is picturing the same thing he pictured. Right? They maybe get close, no. but not exactly. So when you see it on. Th- screen for the first time it's like oh shit it's just kind of like a different feel right and for yeah. me as well, a other side of that before you go too far on that same point there's also that point crazy fans we know how crazy fans are mm-hmm. they envision the character right then see the character and they fucking hate the portrayal a lot because of times you're not always getting you're not always getting the representation of the author sometimes you're getting the re- representation of right. the producer or the director or whoever's in charge like well, they may yeah. have just said Fuck what the, the the writer thought. This is how I Make see it this, how it's gonna be in my movie. <laughs> woke that shit no, up a little bit more. Woke uh, it up. I'm I'm not uh I'm I'm not specifically talking <laughs> about like m- book adaptations on film or TV. I'm just talking mm-hmm. about the mediums in general. If I had a choice, I would rather watch a thing purely because oh, okay. as as a creative person myself, if I was gonna create something selfishly, I want the audience to see what I want them to see. So, yeah, so in I mean, that- I would agree in the instance of like spectacular shows like Andor or like we just watched Severance. Like if they could pull it off like that every time, of course, I'd rather watch it. Right. But we've gotten some terrible shows mm. and stuff that we've watched. True. And at that point, it's like, OK, I, in fact, maybe if I would have read this, you know, I would have enjoyed this story a lot, m- a lot more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the way I kind of see it. Well, anyway, and well, the. The Prime Space movie we watched that fell off there at the end. Oh, uh, Night Skies or whatever the fuck. Oh, Dark Skies, whatever the fuck that movie was. You're talking about the one with the old couple that like had the time traveling thing it in their Night basement. Skies it was Night Skies, yeah. But, yeah. but but no, I mean anyway. So just basically for me, like I, I I'm a, I'm just more of a visual person, like yeah. So I just prefer. Mm-hmm. 
and I used to like to read, and I and I like I still do like to read comics and stuff, though I haven't in a while. It's just I don't know. I find myself I get very distracted. Maybe I have ADHD or something undiagnosed. That's what I was saying. I you get gotta, very distracted. Fucking, yeah, it's not TikTok. It's just you gotta like, just get in the groove. My mind wanders is the thing. It's like that's why I watch like a YouTube video when I go to bed. Right. Because it like yeah. it's just something to kind of focus on. And like if I'm just laying there in the fucking dark and silence, it's like my mind's fucking like all over the place. You know what I'm saying? You should try reading to fall asleep. Oh, I've, I've done the that. good thing about reading not- is like like if you have like a Kindle. Yeah, it does, it's not like it doesn't have that blue light. Not that too. blue light. Yeah. So you could just yeah. read until you fall asleep. Yeah, it's great. So, yeah. Anyhow, I don't know how we got on that topic, but yeah, I prefer. What were we talking about? Oh, Dark Tower. Yeah. So, yeah. Books, yeah. They had Dark books, Tower comic books. Graphic Marvel. novels. Marvel, really? put, yeah, Marvel put them out. Yucking other people's yums. Me? Yeah. No, I wasn't. Yep. I was yeah. making fun Her of Marvel usual. for not liking Watchmen. Yeah. Yeah. I said. <laughs> but yeah. no, Dark Tower. Dark Tower. <laughs> li- I like the Watchmen. I know. I'm fucking with you. God, everybody's so <laughs> defensive tonight. What the fuck? <laughs> defensive, Dan. But no, Dark Tower gets it does get more confusing, but it's a very good series. And the really cool thing about it is there's a lot of like little references and Easter eggs you're gonna miss out on, unfortunately. But like there's a lot of references to his other work in all his books, but the Dark Tower is like the central piece of it all. Yeah. Um, there's actually like an illustration fans have done where it's like it's like a wheel almost and it's like all his books and in the center is the dark tower series mm. but that's like okay. sort of the representation that's what the dark tower sort of is it's like right. I, don't, I don't know if you got to the, like the description of it really or what it is but it, it's like it holds Not quite it's like the pillar of reality it like holds up all reality so in a sense it like it's the center of king's shared universe so he invented the fucking multiverse bro fuck yeah. out of here marvel Stephen king did it first <laughs> Did it first. But, um, mm. yeah, but so I got on a little bit of a... The reason I told you about it is because I found out by accident that there was a show based off of one of his books called... Uh, well, it's a trilogy of books starting with uh, Mr. Mercedes. It's uh, about... It follows a, a, a detective who's trying to solve these, like, serial killings and the killer... He, Have you not seen that before? No, I forgot the show existed, actually. Oh, my Mr. Mercedes? God. Yeah. I haven't seen it. So you call yourself a fan. It's three books. <laughs> it's three books. And fucking Brendan Gleason's in it too, which is like how the fuck yeah. do I, um Yeah, but it, I know. So it's three books. You're even slacking, Dan. It's three books, and they made it into a series that went three seasons, got dropped by the network in twenty twenty. It got picked up by Peacock. So I think there's still a little bit of lingering hope that like they might do a fourth season, mm. but unsure. But I, I forgot the show just existed. I had wanted to watch it back when it came out. And I just, I don't know how I stumbled across it the other night. I, it had something to do with The Undoing. I think it was maybe like one of the writers or something. And I was like, oh, fuck, I totally forgot about this. And then I was like <laughs> doing like a Stephen King deep dive. And then I was like, it you know It was what? on some weird network. It was like on the AT&T channel. Yeah, I don't remember. But it came out. I told my aunt about it. I've told you guys. Audience she's like, network. She's a- Audience, Yeah. <laughs> She's it was eight. owned by AT and T. <laughs> yeah, I'd never heard of that before. Never. That was AT and T's stint into television. But mm-hmm. uh, Dusty knows some shit. Mm-hmm. I told my aunt about it. She watched a couple last night. She said it was great. So I'll probably start that next. You've it's watched good. it all three seasons. It's, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm right. probably gonna be reading um, books. It's not a while. strong all the way through, but it really gets you going, and it's good. Marvin, you should test yourself. Do one of those things white chicks on Instagram do, where they like the book challenge where they read like however many books they can throughout the course of a year. Uh-huh. It's like a white girl. Thing. Well, a lot of white girls do that on Instagram. At least my Instagram. Oh, they just challenge themselves. It's not it's like a, it's like a social media channel. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. It's like a reading challenge. How many, I don't know if there's like a set number, like read this many books in a year yeah. or whatever the fuck, but you should just read all of Stephen King and see how long it takes you. <laughs> oh my God. What'd uh, you say it was like some, some, how many I don't books? Remember. Oh, how, no, the dark tower itself. I think it's like, I don't know, million pay. I don't know what it is. It's a, a lot. Million. I don't know. It's crazy though. But yeah, you'll it's a it's a fun ride. You'll like it. Aliens. <laughs> oh, uh, that's why I got hung up on it too, because I was trying to find out more information about Mike Flanagan's Dark Tower series that he's gonna be doing for Amazon. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. 
and I found an interview. That's going to be crazy, huh? Yeah, I found an interview when it was from like IGN, and IGN was like, hey, we heard you want to do The Dark Tower. It was from like a couple years ago, and, he, and they were like, what would your idea, because at that point, the movie had come out with Matthew McConaughey and Idris Elba, and that movie's dog shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and they were like, what would be your ideal, like set the stage for us, what's your ideal Dark Tower? He's like, well, he's like, it opens up with a black screen, and those texts, the man across, the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. And that's like one of the most iconic things in all of Stephen King history. So just him saying that like gave me the chills. Oh, it's going to be so good. Mm -hmm. You didn't seem very taken aback by that line, Marvin. What's the deal? Uh, yeah, maybe it was I, I thought I was kind of yeah. mid. Nah, you'll get it later on. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll get it later, <laughs> but it was kind of mid from just from the jump. <sighs> I don't know. What am I going to do with this fucking guy? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what I'm going to do with Marvin. What do I do about this guy? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But anyway. I'm kind of in a lull right now. I'm reading. They're going. They're traveling the mountains. All right. Yeah, keep, just keep it's, going. Uh, just stick it out. Yeah. It's just he just keeps talking about mountains and don't, Jake. Don't be a quitter, Marvin. I won't. Okay. Mm. How about you, Dusty? What have you watched this week? Anything new? Uh, no, not really anything new. No, I, uh, my roommate had not seen Silo yet, so I queued that up for him and let him watch in the background while I was doing some stuff, so I got a little bit of a rewatch on it. That's not nice. done yet, right? No, they're on, like, episode seven, I think. Uh, <coughs> the last thing he told me was a mini series, so that's pretty much done and wrapped up. I don't see how they would, I don't think they're going to do a second season. Wait, no. Silo's one season, it's a mini series. No, the last thing he told me is the miniseries single season. Last thing That's who the told Jennifer you? Garner show. <laughs> the name of the show. Oh, the show was <laughs> the, the last thing he told me is the show. Yes. Come talked on, about it for the last Sleepy three, Joe. Weeks. No, we're doing like the fucking, who's that comedy duo? Who's on first? What's who's on, on second? first? <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> know uh, Silo is going to keep going. I'm embarrassed. Nice. Yes. Okay. Are you Severus watching keep that going. Morning? I, I want to watch Silo. I'm just waiting. Yeah, I'm going to wait. I'm yeah. not going to do the week to week I haven't shit. started yet. Can't I've been trying to finish... Uh, um, oh. Raised by Wolves, the AI show. Mm. It's uh, it's pretty good. No, I'll probably start watching some of the new shows to come out so I can complain about them. You know, like Witcher. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I don't want to watch Witcher sunny. season three, but I will. I'm going to watch that week to week. <laughs> oh, Sunny, I'll watch week to week. It's a half hour episode. Those are easy. And those like right. bring me joy each week. The first episode, <laughs> we didn't talk about it. The first episode was so fucking funny. Mm. Second one was a little bit weak, I'll, admittedly. But the first <laughs> one was fucking hilarious. The gang yeah. gets inflated. Or the gang inflates mm -hmm. or whatever. Oh my god, I was they were both dying. hilarious, if you ask me. The second one was funny. It just wasn't as funny as the first one. Was it the uh, Frank shoots every member Frank of the shoots gang? Shoots the entire gang. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, yeah. Oh, but he's or trying to fucking when he's trying to use the gun as a can opener. That was funny. He's just like chopping it into the fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. A good no, that I was almost funny. ate the gun. And that was a French fry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Superman and Lois is almost over. That show is a masterpiece. It's not though. No, well, I mean, season-wise, but also series-wise. I mean, they're not going to continue that, which is a real <laughs> shame. I mean, <sighs> whatever. I don't even want to talk about it. It's depressing. Yeah. But yeah, I'll probably watch Witcher Season 3. It's going to be dog shit, but I'm going to watch it so that we can make fun of it on the show, like on the podcast. Yep. Um. So yeah. Maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised, but I doubt it. Uh, And I probably, I'll probably end up watching... Uh, secret invasion week to week. Yeah, that's what. Oh, yeah, that's like next sure. week, right? Secret invasion. We're gonna. Start there was a five minute teaser. Yeah, yeah, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it though. No. What'd you say, Dusty? We're gonna start running out of stuff with the strike continuing. Oh yeah, we're gonna hit a point. It's gonna run out. Um. Damn. Speaking of the strike, Dusty, what kind of news you got for us this week? Hit us with the news. News all over my all right. fucking lower back. What do you got? Yeah. Let's start with a strike. <laughs> that was crude. I apologize. <laughs> WGAE president Michael Winship. I don't know who <clears> or told what that is. Told Deadline in an interview uh, that 
the or Writers Guild of America, something oh. or other. I don't mm. know what the E stands for. But, uh, going into its seventh week in the strike, union morale is quote unquote exponentially greater today than it was in the 2007 2008 strike. It's been seven Feels weeks already. Producers are starting <laughs> to feel the pinch and the money loss. Boom, and if they want to come to the table, you we'll were, be ready. You Basically, like paraphrasing the last thing. <laughs> yeah. Gotta. So, so yeah, it seems like um, everybody's backing them up, and uh, they're not, you know, their their morale is exponentially greater than it was the last time they strike, and that was a hundred day strike. So we could be looking let's at let's go, let's get a ten year strike. Year long strike. Yeah, let's just <laughs> we don't want a fucking ten year strike. strike. We're gonna get nothing. I'll finally well, be caught well, up on hey, everything. We'll have a this. lot of time to make Marvin watch other I'll old be caught shit. Up. Hey, he will fair. catch up. That's fair. It Keep it going. We'll be able to start the next series. Make Dan listen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Heard you a big uh, Lil Wayne fan, Dan. Oh, yeah. Big fan. <laughs> hey, listen, we'll keep uh, that in so the back pocket. That's what's going on with this track. We're <laughs> going to really. expand the brand. <laughs> no negotiations. But yeah, May 2nd, it has been, it's been oh, oh, seven, eight weeks now. That's oh, crazy. Oh, wow. Um, actually, we're gonna go over here to everything else. Let's see, real uh, quick before you move on with the strike mm-hmm. thing. Like, I feel like there's a world where this leads to like an actual revolution, <laughs> and I'll explain. <laughs> they won't, but yeah, good because people aren't gonna be being entertained by this like mindless entertainment over and over True. again, and they're gonna True. start thinking. Mm. No. About the world. Nah. No. Still got your video game. Like Marvin. Dan, still got TikTok. <laughs> they still got See? mush. That's true. They're they still got their brains. I don't. Yeah. I don't watch TikTok that much. I don't know. You're That's liar. not true. Yes, it is. I watch it <laughs> only when I take a shit. How is that possibly true? Because I don't. We think I just sit here at my all desk right, all day all right. on TikTok. We're not shaming Dan for his TikTok. I don't do I'm that. I'm not shaming. I just want him to be honest. I am being 100 percent honest. I would tell you I have nothing to hide. I fucking use it mostly when I take a shit, and that's like once a okay. day, if sometimes every other day. Okay. I'm not. I'm yeah. You know. I mean, I'm not sitting there fucking like in the dark, like fucking just scrolling and scrolling. <laughs> all right. So. This is something that me and my roommate will do sometimes. Like we're kind of like Make we'll just love? put something on the TV to put it on the TV <laughs> just to watch it. Like mm-hmm. you're like I'm not really interested in watching this. Like, yep. It's a show you've seen before. If you're just putting it on to have something on, right? Sure. Yep, I got you. All right. So apparently Amazon Freebie, which is Amazon's free television, they premiere stuff. They're teamed up with MGM and Warner Brothers Discovery in a deal to add. Basically, 23 is what they're calling fast channels. Uh, so over the next few months, Freeview will launch 12 MGM channels, including single title channels like the Pink Panther, Stargate, Green Acres, The Outer Limits, alongside branded channels. Um, Whether well, they'll do like MGM Presents, MGM Presents Action, and MGM Presents Sci-Fi. Right. Or it'll just be, you know, genre specific. But you'll get to tune in like if you want to watch just like Stargate like if you just want to turn it on there's a Stargate channel and it's just Stargate episodes over and over 24/7 so it's like satellite you radio but for shows but basically yeah so they're <laughs> but yeah they're teaming up with MGM and Warner Brothers Discovery to launch like 23 of these type channels uh Adam Sandler Teen Wolf hmm. uh, all kinds of different shows so if you're into that kind of thing where you just want to put something on and have some mindless entertainment on the background Amazon Freebie. Obviously, there's going to be some ads because it's, it's free television. Yeah, it is free. Totally free. Free. Nice. Uh, but you got to hey, watch the free the stuff with ads is better than all these streaming platforms yeah. charging mm-hmm. people and then 10 still bucks having a ads. service and still having <laughs> ads. I think That's fair. YouTube just like, is up to like uh, 60, 80 bucks a month, which is as much, if not more, than satellite or cable. Nick's wow. paying for getting, it. You're getting advertisements you on all those channels, up. anyways. He doesn't want to listen to me. I told him, Marvin. He's like, there's no way. He's like, I've tried it before. I'm like, you nah, haven't tried, tried it that I had it. Whack shit. And I bet you the yeah. shit that we were using the other night, I bet you they would have great fucking football ones because it's football, not hockey. All right. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's true. It's about the same. Streaming quality content across the internet is the same regardless. Yeah. But anywho, um, Variety revealed the window for Sony's Venom 3. I know you're excited about this one, Dan. October yeah. 2024. Sick. 
Yeah, Kelly Kelly Marcel is writing and directing this one. He also wrote, uh, I think, and directed the first two. Mm. Um, he also did the uh, Fifty Shades of Grey stuff. <laughs> so hmm. got that going for no us. Oh wonder. That's good. Maybe uh, they'll be in know, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I know Dan hates. I don't know how you feel about the Venom movies, Dusty, but I like them. They're fun. I think they were fun. Yeah, but Dan's mm-hmm. like. An elitist, obviously. Dan as is, as a, you is it up an yet. So. avid Sony <laughs> hater. If it, anything they've done comic book wise, he hates, except for maybe the original Spider Man trilogy. Yeah, because they're all not good. <laughs> it's not good. It has nothing to do with being an elitist. It's just not good. What's fun about it? You tell me right now what's fun about it. First of all, they got him saying some corny ass fucking shit, okay, mm-hmm. throughout that whole movie. Mm-hmm. Making mm-hmm. corny jokes. You can't even, when the big fucking fight happens, you can't even tell who's who because all the fucking symbiotes look fucking exactly the same. That was the first sure. one. Second one, you're going to give me Carnage, a character named Carnage, who is a vicious serial killer in a PG 13 movie. So he, <laughs> I could just, everything could happen off screen. True. Nah. And that cartoon fucking depiction of Cletus Cassidy, like, I get it, he's a cartoonish guy, but, like, at least, come on, give me a little bit more than that. Nah, these movies are terrible, bro. I don't, <laughs> don't want to hear nothing about them. And the so- Sony just doesn't make, Sony's like the Warner Brothers. They just make fucking shit that's going to make them money. That's all they do. They don't give a fuck about nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't mm-hmm me. Looking forward to, um... I'm hungry, Eddie. Craven the Hunter. It's going to be great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be dope. Did you guys watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine? No. Nah. No? Nah. Nah. Well, Dan, I know he hates sitcoms. Um, well, there was a character on there known as uh, <laughs> Gina Linetti, and she was not a cop. She was basically a civilian administrator mm-hmm. played by comedian Chelsea Peretti. Okay. Uh, hilarious character. She's getting her directorial debut comedy titled First Time Female Director, mm. um, signed on for Roku. So it's coming out sometime 2024. Uh, it's about a character named Sam, a newly minted female director who struggles to fill the shoes of her male predecessor, putting her southern rural drama in jeopardy, mm. also starring Meg Stalter and Megan Mullally, uh, but uh, help produced by Amy Poehler. But uh, yeah, Chelsea Peretti, she's a funny comedian. This is her directorial debut. Should be a pretty funny show. I'm looking forward nice. to giving it a watch. Yeah. Uh, hey. Shout out to the female comedians out there. I know there's a lot of guys out there who don't think there's funny female comedians, but. Oh, what? Oh, no yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah, that's dumb. To some more Norm McDonald's jokes. <laughs> um, Pat Sajak. We don't talk about game shows at all, but. Uh, 41st season of Wheel of Fortune. He is going to retire. So uh, oh, shout, out. Fuck. shout out to Pat Sajak. <clears throat> is Vanna He's still there? The wheel. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if she's staying around or not. I'm pretty sure she's still there. I don't know. I haven't actually watched an episode in a while, but every now and then sports on. Sometimes it's on before the game. So. Oh, man. My grandfather used to love the wheel. After dinner, yeah. fucking boom, right to the couch to watch wheel. Mm-hmm. Great show. <laughs> yep. So shout out to him. Uh, we talked about this before the Transformers GI Joe crossover. It appears that oh, yeah. that is one hundred percent true. Uh, this is spoilers, so sorry about it. That's okay. Uh, but apparently, at the end of the Transformers Rise of the Beast movie, uh, somebody gets recruited to join the Joes. Mm. And so the the director Stephen Capel Jr. and producer Lorenzo D. Bonaventura. Uh, basically said, yes, we're going to expand this universe. We wanted to open it up there. Uh, we're going to bring in more Autobots and Maximals and hmm. uh, all, all the good things. So it looks like Paramount is going full bore with this G.I. Joe Transformers thing. You're just going to cash in on it. How dare cool. you spoil that for me? Hey, you remember yeah. Pros versus Joes? Speaking of Joes. No. Pros versus Joes. It sounds it's a great familiar. show. I've never heard of that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It used to be on Spike. If you remember Spike, mm-hmm. the channel. Uh, I do remember the channel. It's but... just about uh, like was amateur... it called Bros versus Hoes? <laughs> Pros versus Joes. 
Oh, no, it's just professionals pro versus, versus random guys. Shows is basically yeah. what it was. Yeah. No, I don't. it was good. I do not Great recall show. that. <clears throat> you not you didn't watch much Spike then? Damn. Not a big Spike fan. No, I never really watched much TV. Really. Really. I mean, when I was a kid, I watched TV, like stuff that was on TV. But like, I don't even know what age. It just became a point where I just like stopped watching television, other than for like hockey games. Yeah. Why I do not like network television. Like I just I've network ne- television has been dead for Dan for a long. I've time. just never liked it. Yeah, never been. Once he could order one. DVDs off Netflix, it was over. No, I just never liked it. Like <laughs> I, I never liked any of like the big hit comedy shows. Like throughout the never liked them. Who, How I Met Your Mother, hated it. Seinfeld, fucking hate it. Um, yeah, I didn't watch any of that shit either. Uh, pretty much anything you could name, I didn't like them. Friends, hate it. Yeah, I don't watch Friends either. Never really a fan. The only things I really ever watched on network TV was like wrestling, South Park. I missed out on some good sitcoms. Beavis and Butthead. Like those types of things. And Sunny, I guess, if you want to call it that. <laughs> yeah, but, true. Yeah. News Radio is probably one of my favorite sitcoms. That was a good show. That I've watched. You can't go wrong with it. No. Steven Root, um, Joe Rogan. Phil Hartman, John Lovitz, uh, Andy Dick. Oh, Jesus Christ, how many more comedians were on this show? It was so good. Yeah. But uh, anywho. Uh, that's it for Paramount. Let's see. What do we got here? Uh, let's go WB. Uh, Gotham Knights canceled before season one ended by the CW. This is Damn. the last round of cuts by them. They did, however, Wait, renew- what was cut? Gotham Knights. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> they did, however, renew mm-hmm. Superman and Lois for the 2023-24 season. Uh, they're only going 10 episodes for the last season instead of 13, which is what this one was. Mm. Uh, this is basically CW only carrying over four scripted shows since they've been bought up by Nexstar. Um, the rest of their content is basically going to be unscripted slash... <clears throat> Poorly scripted reality television. So this will be the final season, like officially? The final season will be season four. Yeah, yeah. So we are getting it renewed for a season four to get a finish to it. Right. It's only going to be 10, se- uh, 10 episodes, though, so I need to finish this season. Uh, I don't know. Are they already done with all 13? What what episode? There's, there's one more left? There's three more left, I think. Oh. Two or three. Ten. I, th- I thought that we were on 11, so nah. there might be two left. It's two or three, yeah. I forget. Uh, I looked last night. But anywho, yeah, so that's uh, the Superman and Lois was renewed. That was one on the question mark list for us as far as WB shows go, but it's going to... But didn't its... James Gunn already confirm like he was going to let it sort of like finish? He said he wanted to. He said it would like to go for one or two more seasons, but that really depends on the deal with CW. Uh, if the CW canceled, WB could have saved it and kept it on uh, Max. You know, they could have pumped the last episode on Max. It's such a good CW, show. But... I wish... <laughs> God, yeah. if I honestly, if I was James Gunn, I would just be like, okay, like just continue the show or end the show, and then we're gonna transition into feature films with the same characters. It's just such a great fucking show. Like, and and Greg Berlanti, that dude is like, he fucking knows his shit. Like, I didn't watch any of the other Arrowverse stuff, which you know I've heard like. The first few seasons of The Flash are like amazing and Supergirl's good, but this show is just like this is a it's just a, it's a love letter to Superman. It doesn't get more perfect than this show, personally. He built a pretty good universe on yeah. the CW. He did a decent job. So, um, so Superman Day, right? Superman yes, Legacy sir. in-person screen tests are going to happen soon. Yes, yeah, so all that. Headline reports that they should take place around Father's Day. Most of the people are screening for Lois and Clark. So all the names we've previously mentioned, there's like four or five names on the male and female side. Uh, they are all going <clears> in to do screen tests pretty soon. So uh, production, again, was supposed to start, I think, beginning of next year. But with the strike... Who knows? But they are starting to screen test pretty soon. So that's moving forward. So Yeah, I'm sure we'll start to find out pretty soon. Probably towards the end of the summer, we'll know who is official. Uh, writer, mostly playwrights, and actress, and I'm going to butcher this name, I'm sorry, Anna No. 
Noguera? No, Noguera. Noguera. Uh, I don't know who that is, but go ahead. N O G U E I R A. Uh, uh-huh. She has been hired as basically one of the first project writers for DC. Mm. Um, mm. She did a lot of playwrights and uh, she's done some acting as well. Uh, Hightown, Vampire Diaries, The Blacklist, and The Michael J. Fox Show. I think are her acting credits. Um, I did not heard of any of her written stuff because, like I said, mostly it's plays. But uh, she's yeah. going to be writing some of the quote unquote uh, some of their most secret and coveted projects. So she's like the first mm. real person that Gunn and company is hired to be a writer for some of their projects. So we'll see what she gets to do. But an up-and-comer, I guess, because she's only done playwrights. Yeah, that's right. impressive. Yeah. Speaking of cuts and shit, I saw that uh, National Treasure, Edge of History, got canceled by Disney+. Plus. Yeah, Oof. we reported on that a week or two ago. Did we? Yeah. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. They got to figure some shit out over there, man. They're just, like, dumping money into stuff. And I was like, yep, no good. They're, like, doing, like, the Netflix <laughs> thing. I mean, I guess they have the money to do it, but... Well, I mean, the Edge of... It had some promise, but it was a little too... Yeah. Teeny CW type. I don't know. It just didn't have the. It'd be a lot cooler if they just made like cool shows, you know, like good shows. <laughs> that'd be kind of sick. Yeah. yeah that'd be <laughs> Try cool. something new. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's and... like not Star Wars or Marvel related. Okay. <laughs> so, mm, the last piece of WB news. Something you probably know about, Dan. Maybe you want to elaborate on it for us once I get us going. Oh. The Schumacher cut oh, of Batman Forever does exist. Yeah. That's and Marvin. it is about 170 minutes long. And we are going to get a very exclusive and public review of it by none other than Kevin Smith. That's right. Yes. Filmmaker Kevin Smith confirms Marvel's going to be hyped. His acquisition this of and intent to publicly review and director uh, Joel Shoemaker's unseen cut of 1995's Batman Forever. So, mm-hmm. looking forward to that. Maybe that'll be uh, something we could talk about on a live stream or something if we ever decide to do one of those. That would be a great idea. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know so. too much about it to elaborate on it, but what I do know is this, and I mentioned it briefly in our review of <coughs> Batman a week or two ago, was that. Uh, what the fuck is his name? Tim Burton. <laughs> mm-hmm. Having a stroke. Tim Burton's original plan was for a trilogy of films. Yes, and he had them um, pretty much laid out. Yeah, we talked about it. How it had, the last one never got done because the well, second no. one did so bad. But no, the last one was Batman Forever. So mo- a lot of Batman Ooh. Forever is his script that was redone by Joel Schumacher. Right. But they fired, WB fired him after Batman Returns came out because Batman Returns, as we said, is like way darker, like way more Tim Burton. Like mm. you got Catwoman licking yeah, this yeah, man's yeah, yeah, face right. and shit. Like it's we fi- talked about Schumacher, <laughs> Schumacher yeah. and I can never get it, to do it, his final one. It's like a much, much darker movie. And um, <clears throat> yeah, Warner Brothers, and it didn't do great in the box office. It wasn't until like years after it became like a cult classic as those things usually happen. But mm-hmm. they basically were like, you're out for this movie. He he was a producer on it. He was an executive producer, but a lot of it, from what I understand, was his script that Joel Schumacher came in and just sort of like bubbled up to be the Joel Schumacher movies that we all know and hate, except Marvin. And <laughs> although Batman Forever is not like awful, it's not good by any stretch, but it's not terrible. And I don't think Val Kilmer was even that bad as Batman. I think he was actually quite good as Batman. Batman Forever isn't my Batman. No, I know. Yours is George Clooney, oh, okay. <laughs> Batman and Robin. But that was also a Joel Schumacher one. <laughs> yeah, Bat- oh, Batman yeah, Forever. Batman uh, Forever was Joel Schumacher working with a Tim Burton script. Yeah. Batman and Robin was like shh, all Joel Schumacher. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got so, Batman and so Robin, good. Batman Forever, really and we too. almost got a third Schumacher. Yeah. We almost got a trilogy Damn, that, that would have just been amazing. ruined Batman. And we never would have got a Christopher Nolan <laughs> Batman trilogy. Right. This is what we talked about. But from what I understand, um, yeah, it's like you said, it's 170 minutes, and apparently it's like way darker and way more mm-hmm. psychological, which makes sense because if you go back and watch the movie, that the psychology was a big part of that movie because Nicole Kidman plays like the psychologist and she's like really trying to like dig into Batman. Um, 
and in that film also Harvey Two Face and whatnot. But it's like a lot about psychology. And anybody who knows Batman knows the most interesting thing about him is the psychology of Batman, because True. he's a psychopath. And that's what makes yep. the Joker so fucking good is because it's they're two sides of the same coin. Just one goes <laughs> like just that extra bit further, you know? Yep. Don't talk like one of them. You're not one of them. <laughs> so, Does yeah. Nicole Kidman only play psychologists or I think so, yeah. It seems oh, to be just making sure. Yeah. Seems to be her wheelhouse. <laughs> Oh, that's and cool. And so, on to the Disney news. Yeah, we're going to get to see that. That'll be interesting. I don't think we're going to see it. it. He's going to review it. Well, yeah, we'll get to Well, we... June 19th. Get to see the cut, right? Yeah. We'll nah. get to see his review of the cut, is yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I doubt that'll ever yeah. see the light of day. Maybe we should... Rev- maybe we should you do that. Ba- maybe we should do a live stream on that. I'd be down for that. Yeah. Let's do we'll it. see. Yeah. All right, Disney. Um, <clears throat> we already talked about this this week. Uh, they released the trailer for the Stan Lee documentary, 100 Years of Marvel. Made me cry. Uh, yep. The man is a legend. It did. I hey, Listen, I got a little emotional watching it. I did not cry, but I did get a little emotional watching <laughs> it. This is coming out on Disney Plus Friday, June 16th. This is another thing we discussed. Maybe we start doing some live streams, talk about it. Uh, we'll t- definitely talk about it on the next podcast. Yeah, or uh, the one after uh, it's something. Uh, I think we should talk about at least. But uh, yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to this. You know, um, there was a. Uh, I think uh, even more importantly, somebody. There's a documentary about Jack Kirby. Came out in 2007. It's called Storyteller. I don't know if there's been any others made. There's a lot of famous comic book people in it. Stanley himself is in it, but Jack Kirby, like. You and I probably know who he is, but I see Marvin sitting there. He don't know shit. I love Kirby. Yeah. Jack Kirby really Kirby. is. I got a Kirby patch in my drawer. The guy, you know? Jack yeah. Kirby is criminal. He has a Kirby one trick. I am. Yeah, I was. I was yeah. so nasty with him, bro. Jack Kirby is like criminally underappreciated. He is. Outside yes, of yes. like comic book fans. Like because Stan-, Stan Lee gets all the fame and credit. I mean, Stan mm. Lee is obviously responsible for a lot of the characters, but he did work in partnership with Jack Kirby. And a lot, a lot of, like, the most iconic stuff was Jack Kirby stuff. It's just that Stan Lee was sort of, like, the, the, um, the face of the franchise. He was the... He was the uh, yeah, he was just the face of the franchise, and Jack Kirby was sort of, like, the brains and the art and all that stuff. So, mm. like, he's... Ah, anyway, he's just, like, criminally underappreciated. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, there's guys in the industry who, you know, like Peter David's Hulk, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're a comic book fan, you know who that is and what that means. But if you're not, you're like, ah, no, Hulk is cool. But yeah, I don't don't give a fuck. Right. So yeah, I don't know. I get it. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the documentary. Yeah, no, it looks great. Uh, Anywho, uh, Ahsoka, we actually got a date for that one. Mm. Disney Plus Wednesday, August 23rd, before it was just... uh, know summer fall or whatever the fuck they right this august? later this year 2023 yeah it's yeah it's, we're yeah. right around the corner so yeah, yeah we're gonna quick. get well so this is probably gonna be one of my favorite shows of the year just because the story because i've seen all the backstory are you gonna like yeah, it no well, matter what clone wars and rebels is a lot to build on well it, uh i don't know will no, you judge it fairly mm. yes absolutely no i will judge it harshly as a fan Okay. Ooh, uh, yeah, no. I'm still a little I'm, I'm, unclear. I'm coming in. I'm coming in with bias because Ahsoka is one of my favorite characters. Right? Now, here's the thing: I'm confused about. I guess I'm not really confused, but I just need a little clarity. So, obviously, Grand Admiral Thrawn made his mm. debut in extended universe fan fiction, essentially, in Heir to the Empire, which was a book series. Three books, a book trilogy, and that takes place. I don't. Did those come out before? Uh, yes, Clone Wars and Rebels. I believe so. Yeah, Heir to the Empire mm-hmm. came out. Let's see, May nineteen ninety one. So oh, yeah. yeah, Heir to the Empire takes place a couple years after Return of the Jedi. Yeah, about six. I think is what we established. Yeah. So. They obviously then took Grand Admiral Thrawn and threw him into clone the Clone Wars show. Mm-hmm. 
and then gave him more of a flesh. I think is but so so heir to the empire is not canon, but is Clone Wars canon? Well, that's the thing is like they're talking about like all of this stuff is leading up to a movie called Heir to the Empire. No, no, I know so, that. But oh, okay. but my question is this: Are they taking in because because obviously we've seen certain yes, characters from Clone yeah, Wars yes, appear yes. in. Yes. These the, shows. They've taken liberties. Well, and that's the thing that Star Wars does. They have the extended universe that they call it, and they take liberties from it to bring it in and no, say, no, no. okay, this is now canon. But hang on. My question specific. I know the extended universe stuff isn't. My question specifically is, the Clone Wars series, mm -hmm. is this appearance of Ahsoka and Thrawn and stuff direct lineage from that show? Is it the show yes. direct canon? Well, it's or... from Star Wars Rebels. Star okay. Wars Rebels. Rebels, yeah. So is Rebels canon? So in, in Star Wars Rebels, yes. In Star okay. Wars Rebels, um, Ezra Bridger is the young Padawan Jedi, and he gets in. <clears throat> it's his fight with uh, no, no, I Admiral know. Thrawn. Yeah, yeah. And they get, they get launched into space, and they've been gone ever since. And so we have never seen, we have not seen Admiral Thrawn, we have not seen Ezra Bridger. All these other characters um, mm -hmm. that were in Rebels uh, yeah. are, have still been around. I was just curious and, if it was direct canon or if they were just like, oh, yes. Ahsoka was a cool yeah, character. Let's no, put her into these live action shows. Okay. Yeah, no, these stories are <laughs> canon. Yeah. Now, this cool. is Dave Filoni's baby. Like, Dave Filoni, like, got his kick start yeah. on some of these animated shows. So. Yeah, and they're beloved Definitely. shows. Beloved shows. Yes, beloved. Absolutely. So, I yeah, anywho, uh, August August. That's 23rd. so close. I'm surprised. Coming up. Yeah, yeah. super close. We got uh, some good stuff Spider -Man. coming up, and then we got the the great drought. Yeah, the great, yeah, the, the great, drought. The great drought yeah. is upon us, and this it's is coming. this is part of it, Marvin. Tom Holland uh, taking a year off from acting, and I think this is oh, partly because shit. he knows what's coming with the strike. He's like, he yeah. kind of feels it may be lingering, but also he just did the Marvel stuff uh, back to back to back, and he's doing a psychological thriller. Uh, what's it called? The crowded room that's on Apple TV right now, and he says that kind of broke him a little bit. He just wants to take a sabbatical, so we're not going to see him in anything for a while. There's been a lot of rumors with him on Twitter, and I I don't think any of them are true. That being one of them, not that it's not true, it would make sense because. But I I saw one that was that like he's taking a year off. Yeah, she yeah, said he's taking a year off. No, I, from his mouth. No, I know, but there was one that was also like from his mouth that was like. <laughs> I'll only do Spider-Man 4 if we could come up with a story that that uh is as good or surpasses No Way Home. And then like a day and then everybody was like, "Yeah, Marvel's falling apart." And then like a day later, it came out that like he said from his mouth, "Oh, yeah, no, with like the script for Spider-Man 4 is like well underway and I'm like really happy with how well, it's coming it's not out so far." Underway, they <laughs> They've been having meetings. Yeah. They, they all agree that they've been having meetings, and he says it's going really well. Is the last thing came out of his mouth. But Even still, if he plans on doing Spider-Man I mean, 4, pretty he sure still he's take a year under off. contract. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's under contract with that. So, yeah, he's going to take some time off. He's going to get yeah. some space, get some air. The Great Drought will hit, like, he November. Was... Watch. You'll see. There's going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Nothing's on. Got to watch Wheel of Fortune <laughs> reruns. <laughs> yeah, which is strange for, like, this next piece of news, Loki. Um... Michael Waldron, who was uh, the showrunner for Loki season one and writer for Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, mm. is also going to be the showrunner for Loki season two alongside Eric Martin. Uh, Martin wrote multiple episodes for season one. Uh -huh. This is uh, shooting for October 6th on Disney+. Plus. Uh, they're like nominating showrunners and writers and stuff for a show that I guess it's coming out. It's got to be pretty much. I don't know. I don't know how you're gonna do this with a writer strike. Like they're like, right. oh yeah, we got we got the showrunners and the writers and stuff. And yeah, wasn't that supposed to come out thumbs. soon? I I have to guess. October majority sixth. Yeah. Written. I maybe. If most of it's yeah, written, all they have to do is shoot it. Yeah. And they would probably hire out some like fucking nobodies to do rewrites and but stuff. But this maybe, is October sixth, so that's got to be next year because there's no way they're gonna shoot it and print it in four months. Mm. Mm, you never know. They got them. Nah, they got those factories nah, out Disney, there. No, nah, Disney won't do that. No, no, probably not. I don't know. We'll see. They'll probably push it okay. back. They always push it back. They love doing that shit. Uh, and then something you shared with us, musician Maria Elena Rios. Oh, yeah. Made some allegations on Twitter yep. about Mr. Tanakh. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, this is translated from <laughs> Spanish to English. It is very difficult to talk about the emotional abuse and abuse of power of a sexual predator who is loved in the world for playing a movie character like Tanaka Huerta. Yep. Uh, it's charming in appearance, the great hallmark of a narcissist plus a good helping hand of victimization mm. was her tweet, uh, among some other stuff. Uh, he's She's basically accusing him of sexual <clears throat> assault, and he's denying it. He's come out recently and said, about a year ago, I dated Elena for several months. It was entirely consensual at all times. As mm. countless others can attest, and throughout it, it was loving, warm, mutually supportive relationship. After it ended, however, Elena began to misrepresent our interactions both privately and in front of groups mm. of mutual friends. So he's saying, uh, once we broke up, she's a crazy ex-girlfriend. She's lying. All right. I know I ain't trying. So we got we got we got that whole thing going on. Um, More the latest domestic. hiccup in the Marvel. Yeah. MCU debacle. No new stuff from Jonathan Majors, except that he's dating somebody else now. Social media is not happy about it because of the allegations against his ex Yeah, I think lover. he's dating Megan Good or something. Yes, Megan Good. They're together. They went rug shopping recently. It was the report. I tried to look up relevant news to the court case or anything, and all I saw was celebrity stuff. Like, he went rug shopping with his new girlfriend, and social media is mad. Hmm. So... That's what's going on with Jonathan Majors. Very interesting. Nothing. Stuff. Nothing. <laughs> fascinating. Sweeping stuff. that under yeah. the rug. I hate reporting on this shit. But, you know. <laughs> um, and then uh, the last, I guess, piece, the last bit of news we have: making Star Wars .net owner and editor in chief Jason Ward claimed his industry contacts had yet to report any progress regarding rumored season two of Boba Fett. Mm. Now. This is uh, alluding to rumors that maybe season two of Boba Fett will never happen. Star Wars is cutting back. Maybe this is on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. I tend to lean towards there's a fucking strike going on right now, and so <laughs> nothing's moving forward, and so it right. kind of makes sense, but they're going to cash in on Boba Fett because he's one of the most beloved characters in the Star Wars universe, and if they don't cash in on another season, I would be surprised. Even if they cancel everything else, I think it's going to go forward. But they could just be like, this, hey. This guy says nothing. He's He's got some context that said, yeah, uh, nothing's happening with that right now. That's not to say nothing will or won't, but nothing's happening right now. And that's all the news we have on Boba Fett. It's fair. They could just be like, hey, let's just put this character to bed and come up with a new character who could become beloved. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could. Yeah. And I'm sure they will, but, you know, hmm. who knows? Uh, well, but yeah, that's it. That's the news. Uh, strikes are going to slow news down a lot. We're going to talk about that and then nothing else. And then I'm not going to have anything to report except what we review because yeah, there won't be anything to report except. We're going to be like the, the news strike. anchors in fucking Batman when they're all fucking not wearing makeup and shit, except we just, <laughs> we're, we look like that because of the lack of news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, so uh, it was 50 degrees We're going to start today. talking about <laughs> People's tweets that are celebrity oh, adjacent. I could pick some fucking good tweets. For you. Celebrity <laughs> adjacent tweets is what we're gonna start talking about. I've been nice. fucking. I've been tweeting hard these last couple of days. I got <laughs> sucked into the for you tab. Oh, oh that, shit is oh, bad. Boy. You can't. No. I've been dangerous. fighting with Zack Snyder fans all week. Just <laughs> crazy fights. Good for you. Yeah, these people are just sick. Absolutely <laughs> sick. Anyhow, thanks for the news, Dusty. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Enjoy no your problem. news now, folks, because in a couple yep. months, you ain't going to have yeah. shit. Get it while it's hot. Yep. Get it while it's hot. Um, be over in 15 <clears throat> long days. Who knows? Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, yeah, maybe. Who knows? Hopefully sooner than later. I mean, these motherfuckers need to get paid. Fuck these companies. You know, you know me. That's right. I stand with the writers. Facts. Especially since they're fucking, you know there's some CEOs right now that are like, do we have to rehire them? Like, AI exists? <laughs> like, can we get away oh, with yeah. it? So, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully it works out in their favor, but... Anyhow, let's get into today's review, Marvin. Um, you know motherfuckers are always being told some shit, right? About, nah, we don't want to mess with that guy. <laughs> He's the scariest motherfucker imaginable. 
the general. Yeah. Yeah. A ruthless. Motherfucking general. A ruthless one man. Sometimes it's just squad. your neighbor from the Sandlot, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wait, what? <laughs> the guy. They hit. They hit the ball in the guy's yard. They. Yes. Yeah. That was James Earl Jones. Room. Yeah, you don't fuck with that guy. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> but he was like the nicest guy ever. But I'm talking yeah, about sure. the guys that you really don't fuck with. You know. Ruthless fucking yeah. death squad killing machine. And yep. some motherfucker still thinks they're, they're going to be the ones to take him out. So, like, so silly. <laughs> every time. When the guy in charge ahead of you says, no, nah, just come on back. Don't fuck with that guy. Yeah. And as we know, you know, like, eh. it never goes well for these people. You, and, and, you know, you never fuck with a man with a, with a pickaxe, Marvin. Let that be a lesson to you. This man has yeah. played Minecraft many times. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're talking about Sisu today. Sisu. A good movie. Yep. Sisu. Although they never said Sisu in the movie. Nope. They said a different word. I don't remember what it was. Yeah. No, they um, give you the definition it, in the well, beginning. They give you the, no, they give the you the definition. Yeah. yeah. But they don't say it. They just. No, they not just the actual the word. She said, yeah, she kind of talks about it too at one point, the uh, one character in the movie. Um, yeah. But, uh, so yeah, see, the movie opens up with the definition, which I thought was kind of interesting. And it's actually Sisu, S I S U, for those of you that don't know, it's a Finnish concept described as stoic determination, tenacity of purpose, grit, bravery, resilience, and hardiness. And they describe it a little bit differently in the opening of the movie, but it's basically just like a that. White knuckled, white knuckled ferocity or something. Yeah, yeah. white knuckled uh, something. Basically somebody who's just not going to fucking back down or give up. Right. And um, this fucking guy. Uh, this dude is crazy. Hang on. Before we get into the specifics, <laughs> I just want to shout out, you know, the filmmaker. This is a uh, Finnish filmmaker, Jalmari Helander. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. Um, and the movie is starring a bunch of people I don't know, except for one, and it was a funny standout because I made a joke about it in my notes. But uh, we got the main character of Atami, played by Jorma Tamila, um, mm -hmm. the villain Bruno, the SS soldier, oh, yeah. played by Askel Henny, uh, Jack Doolin, the standout random American dude who is <laughs> Wolf in the film, and then like a bunch of other like random side characters that really get it don't get any time but uh basically right. this is fucking john wick in world war ii in finland and this is uh it's the story of an ex-soldier mm -hmm. who, who has now become like just a he's lost his family uh and he wants out of the war so he's just a lowly prospector living with his fucking dog whom yep. he's lord unkillable. knows what the fuck happened to that thing and his horse and his fucking pickaxe. His pickaxe, though, is like Mjolnir. That thing, that's where he gets his power. Yeah. Whosoever oh, yeah. holds this pickaxe shall possess the power of fucking Don't Atami. Yeah. yeah. And he finds some gold, and he's like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm fucking rich. And as he's going... He found a lot of gold. He found a big that's gold a big, gold vine, uh, yeah. vein. That was a come up if I ever seen one. Oh, yeah, big come up. And as he's, like, on his way to, like, do whatever with it, he runs into, like, a group of uh, SS Nazis. Now... Um, this is set in a historical period, of course. This is towards the end of World War II. And um, not just the end of World War II, but uh, no notably in 1944, um, when uh, this is like right after Finland loses what's called the Continuation War. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Finland was not technically an Axis country they weren't part of the axis powers uh but they did invade uh the soviet union along with the germans for whatever reason um during the famous uh winter war which is where uh you know the soviet union was fucking being attacked all winter and like s fucking millions of people died or whatever uh finland was involved in that and then the continuation war took place after that and this is where we're at in this film so uh, that's the main character. He's just a Finnish, like, super soldier. And, <laughs> yeah. and and we get, like, the same backstory from fucking John Wick. I mean, like, they might as well have just called him Baba Yaga because, like, it, that, <laughs> th it's like the same reveal. It's like, oh, they find his dog tag at one point, and they're like, oh, right. this motherfucker's oh bad. You ever heard of this guy? Yeah, he's <laughs> he's unkillable. They sent him. They said know, we should go yeah. immediately. Yeah, the Finns. Yeah. The Finns could. Did you tell him he killed seven of our our men? Yeah, 
general said we're lucky. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. It's, she gets the fuck out. So he's basically like just an old Finnish John Wick with a pickaxe is really what this is. Um, and uh, yeah. So go ahead, Marvin. What were you going to say? You were going to say some stuff about the characters. You could kick it off. This main guy, Atami. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's so ridiculous, dude. Mm -hmm. If you need to take out the Duttons, oh yeah, you might want to call him up. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. By the end of the movie, I thought he was about to fight Thanos. Like, <laughs> like he was prepared. He survived everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the one character that I was talking about was the SS. He the survived hanging. He just was hanging. He survived hanging. He, He's he survived he the fell off and then caught it at the tail oh, yeah. end. Dude. I was like, oh yeah, he got that. It. Was worse He's, than uh. Oh, that was uh, that was worse than our second movie review, Uncharted, where <laughs> yeah. yes. they were jumping on yeah, you remember the plane the scene. Yeah, and the and shit. That I get, because that's crates. from a video game. That's like a direct that's adaptation true. of a video game. So it's like you expect that. This motherfucker, you're not even described like, yeah, he survived <laughs> hanging because he fucking stuck a piece of like rebar before, into his leg wound so he could hang without really hanging overnight. But even before that, he's just yeah. somehow just hanging. Yeah. And not um, choking. Yeah. So this is, <laughs> this is actually, uh, I would, I would say a grindhouse sort of style of film. Uh, bit, yeah. Grindhouse films, for those of you that may not know, <clears throat> Marvin was uh, like really low, but we've talked about grindhouse before. It's most commonly yeah. in like, horror genres but it's like old school like very low but the 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 term comes from theaters that used to just show very low budget like b horror movies and also like gratuitously violent and gory films mm. and this kind of takes inspiration from those types of things um very notable with like the title cards that come up every so often chapter one chapter two very mm. grindhouse style um, but just the, the the general violence and like gore that this film has uh, throughout most yeah. of it, and um, yeah, we were talking about the characters, right? Like the one guy, the little lackey of the of the the final boss guy. Yeah, that dude. Like everybody else in the film, I would imagine is like a Finnish actor. Maybe some of them were German. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker is like he looked like a dude out of the Sopranos. He was like straight <laughs> up an Italian dude. He had a fade yeah. and like a blowout and yeah. shit. It was such it was a standout. So yeah, that was Jack Doolin. And I looked him up. He has been in like some uh I don't think he's ever been in like a mafia thing. Yeah. But he looked very Italian. He was in the boys, apparently, at one point. I don't remember him in that, but oh, wow. he did look familiar. So it was probably from that. Yeah. Um mm. In the boys, he played a character named Horse Tommy, and I don't really remember that character, so I don't know. Horse Tommy. Um, Maybe that was at the fucking orgy party. Oh, so. uh, prob actually probably. <laughs> now that I think of it. Oh wait, wait. <laughs> he might have been one of the twins the, who was hosting the party. Actually, mm. I think he was. I think that's who he was. Um, anyhow, so we got this fucking Italian dude and his like boss and like a group of SS soldiers. Now, as you know from history, the SS they were like the the worst of the worst of Hitler's soldiers. The SS, oh, yeah. they were like paramilitary. They weren't even official, like, German soldiers. They were just, like, they were paramilitary, basically. Right. And and uh, they're the ones that fucking Hitler sent in to do all the fucking real dirty shit, like burn oh, yeah. entire cities, which we see right. here in this film. It takes place in the Finnish Lapland, and they're just kind of rolling through, like, burning fucking towns in their wake. Where were they yep. trying to go? They were trying to go... I think they were going through Finland north? to where? I don't remember, but it was north. Yeah, something like that. doesn't matter. doesn't matter for the plot of the movie. Nothing matters, actually. It's just that this guy, they run across him, they want his gold, and yeah. they chase him for the entire movie uh, to get his gold. Um, it's not really a revenge flick because they're chasing him throughout most of it. Yes. And then towards the end, it flips, and then he goes to get his gold back, which he does with ease. Um, That's right. At one point in this fucking, there's so much ridiculous shit in this movie, um, action wise. What would you say was the most ridiculous thing that he did? Honestly, I don't know, but there's one I'll point. I'll tell you mine. Hang, there's one point in this fucking movie, the minefield scene, which is like pretty early on when he's traveling yeah. on this horse, just completely blows up in front of your face. Pieces that everywhere. It's crazy, yeah. And people are just blowing up left and right, like just. When he's throwing the mines, yeah. that's probably when I. Would be like, okay, this is this is enough. Yeah, this guy dude, is throwing, like in the he's head. throwing our own minds yeah. at us. When guys, he, we yeah. should probably back off. When they just 
starts shooting through the smoke. This motherfucker's Captain America. He's got a shield yeah, and he's legitimately blocking shit? bullets <laughs> with this fucking shield. With his with his gold pan. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it was the gold pan. That's exactly what That's it was. That's exactly what pan, it yeah. was, bro. What the fuck? That was some Captain America <laughs> shit, yo. I was like, what that the fuck so, is happening? I mean, here? this it's is too. there's so much grandiose stuff in this fucking movie. Like all they had to do was like shoot him, but this is like the movie <laughs> where like the leader's like, no, 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 no. He's already going to his death. Come on. Just you I know, knew this, right. I, I I knew while I was watching, I was like, this is a dusty criticism. This is a dusty criticism. Yeah. Rightfully <laughs> so, because I was criticizing it too. Because yeah, you're like, just just kill the fucking The whole guy. plot could yeah. be over with one bullet in the beginning. Because yeah. one of the guy, the Italian looking guy, wanted to shoot or him. Anywhere. He wanted to shoot him. Like they were yeah. surrounded. They surrounded him when he had the fucking mines. They could have killed him right then and there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, plenty of opportunities to kill him. Uh, there's one point in this movie, like, like I said, it's pretty gratuitously violent. There's a lot of gore, a lot of guts, a lot of so, body parts, but yeah. there's one point in this movie where he fucking jumps in a river and they send some soldiers in on a fucking boat to go after him and he's holding his breath and they're like, he may be immortal, but he has to come oh, up yeah. sometime. <laughs> this fucking guy, these people jump in that after him. That was the most ridiculous. That was what I was going to say. That was the most ridiculous part of the whole Bro, movie. Bro, he, cut he cuts their throats and he's fucking sucking air out of their dying <laughs> bodies. Yeah, yeah. To, to stay Listen. underwater longer. This shit was like Jaws, bro. Like, yeah. This dude, uh, I just, I was laughing the whole time. He's just, people are just going under and not coming out. And you just get that like blood gurgling to the top effect from Jaws. Yeah, it was yeah. just like, what the fuck is, it was so crazy. <laughs> And then he just like skitters off and uh, when he gets to the other side. But uh, yeah, this guy's a crazy motherfucker. He, I, I, he would he would take. I think he would beat John Wick. He would. I'm just gonna say it right there. And, oh yeah. And you know, let me tell you something else. He is the dirtiest motherfucker you'll ever see in your life. He is <laughs> covered in dirt a hundred percent of the time. Stitching massive fucking wounds with like dirty he, fucking pliers. Dude, that was fucking crazy. Well, his first gunshot wound, he took a <laughs> clump of dirt and just shoved it in there. And yeah. Fucking folded his coat back yeah, up. Yeah, he's like, fucking this putting this dirty thing. metal, actual clumps of dirt into bullet holes. He's <laughs> he's sticking fucking lit matches into fucking bullet wounds. Like this, this dude don't care. And I was but not only did he, he when he was hanging, wired, sewed himself up. Yeah. When it, <laughs> When he was hanging, not only did he rest his full body weight on the hook, but mm -hmm. he like he like went to sleep there. That's what I said. Yeah, he just stuck that shit into his wound and was like, "All right, I'm good for the night." And not just, just went for to like sleep. a, little, a yeah. quick little ten seconds of relief or a anything. Whole ass he night. went to sleep. Yeah, whole ass night. That's some old school gangster shit. That's like the <laughs> what's the uh, there's a movie where a guy has no fingers. He's like I had, to, I didn't. You know, get to cut my fingers off with a knife. I had to eat them off. Oh, you're you know? thinking of uh, the first John, um, uh, the first um, uh, 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 the movie with Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, with yes. The show that uh, we like, Jack Reacher. Jack it was the Reacher, Jack Reacher yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it was the guy's movie. like, I had to eat my fingers off. Yeah. You don't get to cut your fingers off. You got to eat them off. And he's like, they always choose the bullet. Like they won't. Uh, they won't I would, even eat their own fingers off. I was sitting here <laughs> watching this. I'm like, well, why does he even want his fucking gold back? Like. He's gonna have a fucking like full body infection after this fucking <laughs> oh, ordeal. Oh yeah, the like, infection is gonna take him out for what's, sure. What's the gold shot, even gonna yeah. do? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I mentioned we get that like John, like exact John Wick like exposition. We get it twice actually in this movie, and I'm referring to John Wick, the scene where you know the famous Baba Yaga scene where the kid's like, "Who for that fucking nobody?" He's like, "That fucking nobody, John Wick." Right. But you get that exact scene at one point. The uh, SS guy, he finds this guy's dog tag and he calls it in. The general gives him the lowdown. He's like, oh, this motherfucker was crazy. Like, he lost his family and he went fucking berserk. Even the Finnish army or whatever couldn't keep, keep him fucking yeah. at bay. So they just decided to send him out on his own to slaughter whoever. Um, he killed 300 Russians. And they call him Koshaya, the immortal. Yep. And like I said, you could have just skipped the extra work in the writing process and just called them Baba Yaga because like, <laughs> they're close enough to Russia well, anyway to where it would have made sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Baba Yaga's a witch, usually, generally. A yeah. Female, that's where they twisted it up with John Wick, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, for as good as this... Honestly, I, I actually enjoyed the movie 
pretty much throughout, I thought the cinematography was really, really good. A lot of these like vistas yeah. and like a lot of the shots that they showed, these long shots of him in the distance on like these fucking, you know, we got, you got the uh, horizon and like, it was, uh, even like a lot of the, um, the violence in the movie, while it was gory and pretty like in your face, it was like kind of shot well, right? Very creatively shot too. There's one point he like shoots a guy under the jaw and the top of his head fucking explodes through his helmet <laughs> yeah. and his helmet yeah. pops off, but you get that shot from like down below. Right. So while it's pretty gratuitous, it's actually like a creative way to do that sort of thing or show it yeah. anyway. For sure. So I appreciated all that. I appreciated the cinematography. I thought most of the acting was pretty good, though. I don't, I mean, I, I per personal little critique is that in movies like this, I, I prefer if it's subtitled, it, it makes me, it makes it feel more real to me. These guys aren't going to be just speaking perfect English. I thought oh, it was yeah. going to be all subtitled. That. I didn't actually, I was that a little, wasn't so really surprised to be honest. I get it. It's like a very not serious action movie, sort of. So it doesn't yeah. really matter. But I don't know. That's a little, just a little gripe of mine. But overall, I thought most of the acting was good. His acting was great, despite not really having a single line of dialogue until the very end of the movie, where he says For like sure. two things. I thought um, his expressions were very good. Like it's mostly him just like grimacing in pain and screaming <laughs> the entire time. But I, yeah. But like, I like, he really sold that like that like sold it. weathered soldier who's just like wants to be left alone like just please they did a good job with the audio too i thought the soundtrack like yeah a lot of it was just like low low chord tones is really all it was to give that ambiance of like the grind that he's going through like he's yeah. in the grinder it also had like that. a the movie had like a western feel to me too a little yeah, bit absolutely yes, um, well. and, I, yeah. and i think that was the grindhouse appeal of it part of it um yeah. mm -hmm. like very like it felt like a lot like quentin tarantino obviously he made the definitely film definitely quentin tarantino-esque felt very yes, quentin tarantino minus the n-word 60 times <laughs> um robert rodriguez ish yeah it felt a lot like that um but for as much as i enjoyed the movie and for as good as it is for the most part uh, the ending lost me it, that shit is just it was too ridiculous at that point like i get we yeah, I get we saw a lot of ridiculous shit, but the this whole there's this whole like <laughs> finale that's an action sequence that takes place on a plane. Not only does it take place on a plane, this guy fucked. uses his pickaxe <laughs> to get onto a taking He's off plane. On. He just hangs on to that shit, then chops his way into this fucking plane. Yeah. Yeah. And has his little final boss fight. That was a little bit over the top and much for me. Like, I, I, I was sold throughout the movie, but this is where it lost me. Um, <laughs> because, it, it, I, honestly, it felt very out of place for what the rest of the movie was. The rest of the movie, like, while it was over the top, it still felt, like, pretty grounded and realistic. Maybe because of the setting and that it's, like, World War II and you could, yeah. like, buy the fact that it's just, like, this group of fucking Nazis trying to, like, kill this guy for his gold. It was all pretty believable. Yeah. Up until this fucking plane scene. <laughs> and like I said, I thought he was going to fuck it. He, he was, this guy's like an Avenger. Like he survives everything. And finally oh, yeah. at the end, he brings down the fucking plane and it like evaporates into thin air. And then sure enough, it like crashed into like the biggest bog on planet earth. <laughs> like that mud just must go down. Like and fucking, the only way he gets out his fucking pickaxe. His pickaxe. Yeah. Don't That's it. like he, the plane just happened to crash into like the Marianas trench of mud. Like, <laughs> Yeah. He comes out unscathed. Yep. And then just like walks his ass to a fucking bank and like hands yeah. in the fucking gold and is like, I want cash. And it's like, okay. And then the movie just is ending. Big it ended. That was the overtop moment. I was like, Big I would have like grabbed the stick and try to like soft land in the mud, like trying to like nosedive in it while you tie yourself to the tail. Cause you know, you're yeah. I mean, he knows how to fly down. a plane. They they could have at least had him like yeah. landing it or something. I don't know. That was yeah. the overtop moment for me. I was like, come on. Come that on. that ending <laughs> was a uh, was a bit much for me. That it was a bit was much. a bit much. That that that's where the movie lost me a little bit. It's gonna. I'm docking yeah. it points on my rating because of that ending. Oh. Um. But I will say again, I'm, I'm a, the majority of the movie. I I actually enjoyed. I thought I wasn't gonna enjoy it because I don't really. Don't particularly like military dramas anymore these days. Like, I don't know. I'm kind of just over. I never really liked them. There's like a few military 
themed. This felt more like the David Harbor Santa movie than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't it wasn't it, mm. it wasn't a military movie. The description yeah, okay. I thought mm. it was because the right, description. Right. When an ex-soldier who discovers sure, gold yeah. in the Lapland wilderness tries to take the loot into the city, Nazi soldiers led by a brutal SS officer battle him. That's not really... I mean, it's an accurate description of the film. But it's not, yeah. But you would never know, based off of that description, that this movie was, like, basically John Wick in World War mm-hmm. II. So, I didn't think I was going to like it at all, but I actually really enjoyed it. Um, again, the most shining part of it for me was the cinematography. I thought it was really good. A lot of beautiful shots in the movie. Yes. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, great makeup too. Like uh, him him just being like mm-hmm. all cut up and muddy and bloody and Everyone's scarred up. Everyone's fucking like, filthy. You know, I was really... Yeah, I, they did a really good job of showing that grit. I was yeah. pretty impressed. I tried to look it up to see for sure, but I couldn't find a lot of information on it. Um, like I know, like production wise and stuff, but I wonder how much um, practical effects they used for a lot of the wounds and like the kills and stuff, because it might have just been very good CGI, but a lot of the stuff looked very practical. Like his scars, the close ups were for sure practical. Like his giant, even fucking the splatter wound, effects, right? The splatter, even effects. the splatter effects looked amazing. But the one scene that really like impressed me because they used a lot of like creative cuts and stuff too. Like I'll go back to that scene where he shoots the guy through underneath. It's like the shots fired. You don't just see his head explode all in one shot. Obviously, it's like they use a lot of like cool camera tricks, like quick camera tricks, where it's like the gun is shot. And then from a, like a lower angle, like you see the aftermath of it, but you never see the whole thing. So that was probably right. well, even the first, like the first kill scene, the knife where in he the stabs head, stabs the guy through the fucking skull with the knife. Yeah, um, so- but there was there was one at the end where the SS guy, uh, Bruno, the boss guy, kills his, the, you know, the guy at the end. He turns around and shoots him in the face for the yep. head. Mm-hmm. That was like yeah. straight on, like you see the bullet hole form and everything. And I rewound it a couple times to see if I can catch whether it was CGI or not. And I honestly couldn't tell. So the special effects were done really well, whether they were CGI or practical. I thought that was all pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. But I couldn't find really anything about those things. So I'd be interested to know, but this movie isn't actually like out really anywhere here. Like you could watch it on, you could buy it on Amazon or oh. or Google, I think, but like it's not fully released in yeah, the U.S. Google yet. Play movies. I think it'll. Co- I think it's coming out like later July or something like that. Um. So maybe we'll get more info on it then. But yeah. um. Yeah, movie seems to be quite popular. Critics who have seen it are like kind of raving about it at this point. Um. It was cool. I mean, it's yeah. nothing groundbreaking, but no. it's a fun watch and it's worth sure a watch. A fun watch. Is what yeah. I would say. Well, it kind I of. Would rem- agree. Not in like the, not in like story or tone or anything like that. Just purely based on the premise, it reminded me a lot of Nobody uh, with Bob Odenkirk. Oh yes, yes. Because Nobody True. is like you know it's a John Wick story, but it's it's a creative version of John Wick. Story, which again, to John Wick's credit, John Wick was at the time when it came out a creative revenge story. We've right. seen tons mm-hmm. of revenge stories over the years, but this one is about his fucking dog, right? Yeah. Oh, you killed my dog. That's something everybody could relate to, right? <laughs> yeah. And then it took it one step further, which is my favorite part of John Wick, which is where it does the job of the audience for the audience. Like if you sit, you normally when you watch a movie like this, where there's like a badass motherfucker who's going to get some revenge, you as an audience member, you're sitting there like, oh, fuck, you fucked up. Mm-hmm. You fucked up. Well, John Wick does that for you literally in the film where one yeah. of the characters is like, Oh, you fucked up. You fucked oh, with the wrong dude. Yeah. Now that's yeah. the first John Wick was like the first time you really saw that. At least I did anyway. So I, I love that part of John Wick. Um, and then, you know, obviously everybody now wants to like recreate the magic of John Wick and like uh, nobody I thought was like really good. And it was like a really yep. creative version of that. And this is another very creative version of that type of story where it's like very samey, but just different enough to give it that like extra appeal. And that yeah. being the fact that, you know, this isn't really revenge, more so just like, well, you're in my fucking way, so you're fucking with me. I guess yeah. I got to take you out. Um, I was minding my own business. You yeah. entered my world. Yeah. And now you have to reap the punishment. But set in World War II, right? And and the thing, the other yeah. thing, the last thing I want to say, what's interesting about this is like, I feel like we live, you're probably going to roll your eyes at me, Dusty, but I feel like we live in a world now where it's like, 
at least I feel this way. It's like, it feels kind of weird to like watch tons of people get like brutally murdered in a movie. They're just like bodies that get stacked. Yeah. But when it's a bunch of people responsible for killing an innocent little puppy or Nazis, you don't really give a fuck because they're fuck them. Like, you know what I mean? So that's another reason why I thought this movie worked. But um, Mm. yeah. Do you guys have, have anything to add to the discussion? Um, that I'm glad we, haven't we didn't talked get about. to see the dog die. Yeah, what the fuck happened to the dog? The dog just like disappeared. Dog got left at the just gas drinking station. Drinking water out of the the helmet that the dude he had his brains blown out into, right? Yeah, like the dog yeah. was kind of like following him along the whole way, and then like all of a sudden he's a just, very loyal dog, and he just left them. He just fucking yeah, well, the left guy them. used well the guy used him for bait was was obviously coming. Yeah. And then oh, yeah, that was picked that up, and then that was gnarly bait. Like, with and the then dynamite. like he took off. And after the plane crash, you don't see the dog again, right? No, you assume nope. he goes back. I guess you left to assume he just goes back for the dog. But I would have liked to see that as the conclusion. Yes, that would have been a great conclusion. Fuck the bank. Yes. No one cares about the bank. Yeah. yeah, but maybe they did it, like, because they didn't want it to be too much like John Wick in that sense. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I was left wondering that. I actually also, the last thing I'll touch on, we didn't talk about, like, the group of women. So oh, yeah. this uh, Nazi SS battalion they have like a truck full of women that they've taken from the town that they set on fire and they're mm-hmm. using them as like sex dolls basically yep. um and they get a little bit of redemption in the film as well that's where our second set of exposition comes in um mimosa willimo is the actress she played a character named Aino. she's one of the chicks on the the truck she's laughing at one point and this Nazi guy's like, what are you laughing at? And she's like, you guys are already dead, basically. And she says the same yeah. thing. Like, we've all heard the story. You've never like, heard the story of the right. Baba Yaga. Yeah. Pretty so, much. <laughs> essentially the same thing. And sure enough, he yeah. comes in the truck, slaughters everybody. But uh, he gives them a bunch of weapons, and they're actually paramount to his attack on this battalion at one point. Yep. They uh, gun down the whole truck of Nazis. And then yeah, that they, was a sick. I like that. They kidnap mm-hmm. popped out. <laughs> they kidnap Wolf and take him to so, like the Finnish army. I would have liked to see Wolf probably get brutally murdered because he was a piece <laughs> of shit, but well, it got worse. He got fucking completely destroyed and like, well, you don't really know what like happened to bitch. him. Yeah. We saw him. He made him in like, he just, he, he beat him up and then he just spared him. Well, at the end when she takes them, he's on the tank, he's hanging on the tank. But uh, I know tank. that I'm saying we saw, we, I mean, we saw him get, Oh yeah. Yeah. No, he definitely gets fucked up. I like to yeah. imagine before the girls took him over, they like raped him with like guns or some shit like gun barrels. Cause that would have mm. been fitting. <laughs> yeah, since since our is bleeding asshole at the end of the movie, yeah, that would have been a weird scene. Well, our with. intro, yeah, our that would have been a bit over the top. Our introduction to him is at, like post rape of one of these That's women. True, and um, he's fucking filthy. Oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, oh, sm- yeah. probably smells like shit. Ugh. But uh, yeah, do you think, what do you think? Real quick, what do you think? Do you think it was the go- them stealing the gold or him seeing the entire town burnt? down is what triggered him to go after them or a combination I think it was of both, a, maybe. A combination, I think it was probably I think. a little bit of yeah. everything. I mean, you get the little bit of backstory you get from him is that his family was killed. So, yeah. so the, the he, he probably, had already lost everything and he found an escape and then he lost that and then yeah. he got it back and then he went back, you know, he got the town. And well, seeing like, the oh, town just, burning, it's, it was probably a little bit of a reminder for him. Well, and, yeah, mm-hmm. knowing that those girls were in the truck and that was pretty much all that's left of the town. Yeah. Mm, it was a little bit true. of everything, I feel like. Like it, yeah. it yeah. all added up. That's the same thing that I got from that um as well. Yeah. But yep. uh yeah, overall really enjoyed it. Sounds like you guys did too. It's rating time, boys. Mm. Nice. It, this has a six point nine on IMDB. What are you guys thinking? It's a seven. Seven? Yep. I gave it a I gave it a point bump. Yep, it's a seven. All right, I changed my mind. I won't bump it down. I was going to bump it down because of the <laughs> ending, but I think it's it's a seven. Yeah, it was a great movie. It's just a really fun watch. I it's mean, if you like a little mindless, gratuitous violence. Yep, and it's and short, too. Y- yeah, it's just it's it's short. Have a short good run time. Not a lot of dialogue, but again, great cinematography, interesting ambiance with the music choice, and, you know, explosions and fighting. Yeah. Yep. What's not to love? I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Fun flick. Same, yeah. Um. Yeah, really, all there is all to right. say about it. I'm glad. I'm glad I watched See it. You soon. Yeah. 
see you soon. Check it out, folks. If you've already seen it, let us know what you think about it. Uh, leave a comment somewhere on one of the platforms. Um, if you have not done so yet, consider subscribing, either on YouTube or any other platform where you prefer to listen to podcasts. Join us next week. We're going to be talking about... What are we talking about next week? We're going to be talking about... The Extraction. Are... Extraction 2 with yes, Chris Hemsworth. Extraction 2. We're Holy probably going to talk about both of them, right? We're going to talk... Because I don't think we really talked about the first one. So we're going to watch both of them talk oh, about yeah. both of them? Or I don't think we'll second. review both of them. Maybe we'll give a little rundown of the first one. Okay. We'll Sounds see. Good. But nevertheless, join us next week. We're going to be talking about yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Extraction 2. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you then. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you. Hasta.